So I'll be talking about uh, the role of ontology in data mining met in cassava. So our IT mandate crop, we have six mandate crop at high tier, with cassava being one of them. Yam, uh, maize, soybean, cowpea, banana. So cassava breeding is done at high tier uh, across all the hops from the west to the... Um, anyway, I don't know what, why the pointer is not working. So from the west, uh, west African hop to east African hop to, uh, to the southern African hop. Uh, so the headquarters sit around here, and that uh, this gives us an overview of uh, uh, the, the, the different breeding stages we have in cassava. So it's about uh, it's an, it, it took it takes about eight years to breed cassava. Uh, so basically, uh, these are the predominant growing zones uh, of cassava, and it's showing the different agroecological zones we have in cassava. So basically, I'm trying to give us an overview of how much work we do in cassava. So this shows the number of plots with phenotype across all the breeding stages. So you can see that we generate a whole lot of data in cassava. So uh, what are the challenges? So we have challenges associated with uh, root bulking rate, and uh, we are thinking, well, with all these challenges that we have, you know, how could we, you know, ease uh, the phenotyping? The phenotyping. So uh, bulking rate, one of the technology we have tried to adopt, which is in process, is uh, the gram penetration radar. We are testing at the moment, and I think a number of work has been done in SEAT, and that is a publication uh, with a team uh, with uh, Enan Ceballos. So our GPR work is uh, just to use uh, this cat. This cat emits uh, electromagnetic pulse into the soil, and what it does in return is to have, it said that you have the pulse transmitted, refracted, or you have it scattered, and they use that, the algorithm uses that to develop a kind of uh, return as a function of uh, time. I think maybe Enan will tell more about that in the course of the workshop. So uh, perishability of planting material, we want to rapidly select and advance selected materials. And how we going about this, we have used cassava base selection index to, to, to rapidly do that. Then difficulty in phenotyping quality trait. Dry matter, starch, fiber, milliness, gary, fufu, and other culinary traits. Phenoap has helped in, uh, in rapidly, rapidly doing some of this trait. I, I will show that in, in, uh, in, in the slides, in the subsequent slide. Then uh, labor intensive field operation, mechanization will, have a, will, will help us in this regard. So um, the other challenge is adoption rate. You release variety, then you discover that the adoption rate of this improved variety is low. So how do we think we can? you know, combat this, and I think PVS will help. Then uh, I also think, you know, with PVS, you start talking about uh, on-field participatory varietal selection, you talk about how field participatory varietal selection. Uh, these are things to, to, to think about. So uh, this diagram shows the cassava church ontology, like an image description of what cassava is, uh, showing the stem color, the root shape, the neck length, so it's just to tell you about you know, what cassava trait ontology is. Then the start of our ontology, we started ontology in 2012. That's a mistake, 2012. And uh, we started with 102 variable terms. And uh, we, we pulled that together from a 40-year data set from high TA. Then uh, the trait, uh, we harmonized the historical one with current trials. Then uh, Obo Edit has been used, but recently we, uh, we tried to switch to Protege. Then uh, we have expanded the ontology, and at the moment we have 307 variable terms. So this, this shows the distribution of the number of terms that we have in the ontology. So what are the ontology-driven tools we have used? Uh, uh, we've used BMS. Uh, Actrials was one of the tools we have used in the past. Then we have cassava base. Then the field book have been pivotal as a main data collection tool. Then we have a number of uh, apps in the final app project. So we started with breeding management system right from when it was the inter integrated breeding workflow system. And uh, we used that in managing our trials between 2012 and 2014 uh, for, from this location in Nigeria. Then uh, we moved on to HAC trial. We used HAC trial in managing uh, our international collaborative trial in Ghana, Togo, Benin, and Nigeria. Then uh, we, uh, we, used, we, we, we uploaded our trials on the CMD project, which was conducted in Nigeria in the year 2003, which was more of an historical data. We, 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 we put that on the hack trials too. Then we have trials from Haiti, East Africa. Then uh, moving on to cassava base. Cassava base, we use cassava base uh, for our day-to-day -day breeding program, breeding activity, as I speak. And uh, 
Uh, what we do there is to design our experimental, uh, our experiment. Once we design our field trial, we upload that field trial into, in, we upload the layout into the field book app. And then uh, when we upload, we go to the field, we score the, we score, uh, the phenotype on the field. Then we upload that into the database and you can pretty easily look at uh, the, uh, the distribution and the uh, distributive statistics of such data. So uh, beside uh, using this for server base, we find out that it is easier, you know, collecting data on the field because it's ontology driven. And as I speak, on cassava base, we have 2,420 trials with 50% coming from high IT and everything is open to the entire public. So that's cassava base for us. Then uh, beside uploading trials on cassava base, we have incorporated validation uh, algorithm into the database that checks to see that the trial being uploaded conforms to the scale of measurement in the ontology. So if you upload something out of the scale of measurement as described in the ontology, the database that it accepts this. Then uh, we have images also associated with some of our traits, and as such, these images can be used, uh, can be used in the resource folder in the field, uh, field book application. The field book has a, has a folder which is called resource which could put images, and that can guide your technician on the field while collecting data in case that is, uh, that's an argument as to what, uh, what uh, the scale of measurement is on the field. So, um, so this is how we use the field book. You download the ontology from cassava base and uh, this is how it looks like in the field book with the different IDs. Then you, you import your uh, field layout, then you, you phenotype. So what about other tools from the PhenoHub project? So what we are trying to do is to make everything tablet driven, tablet or mobile phone driven. And uh, one of the tool we are using is, uh, is called inventory. So inventory is, we use that in uh, estimating uh, the dry weight, uh, the dry weight of cassava sample during the estimation of dry matter. So uh, dry matter takes about 72 hours to estimate and after taking the sample out of the oven, we use inventory as an app with barcode to, to get us data. And how that works is you place a sample, you place it on the scale, a lean USB scale, you connect that to your tablet, then you scan, then you get your data. So basically the data will put it in this format, then it's ready for upload because the barcode label we scan is coming from the database. So it's easier to push this back into the database. Then uh, there is another tool we are testing at the moment, it's called a uh, SIO. Uh, so the, the, the tool is called Prospector and they have to be used in combination with it is called SIO. So we use that for uh, estimating dry matter on the field real time. It's being tested at the moment. Then uh, we have, uh, and hub called Wi-Fi counter. We use that in uh, counting uh, Hadot Bemesi Tabasi on the field, and um, we have ontology ID associated with it. Once we have uh, this data set exported out of the hub, we put it in this format, and it's easier to upload to upload uh, into the database. So uh, there are a couple of hubs which I didn't list. We have hubs for uh, brown streak. Uh, uh, estimation, it estimates the proportion of brown streak. We have app for oxidation. We have a number of apps which, which I didn't list here. So moving on to participative variety selection. So um, this was done in about two locations, Mokwan and Hubiaja, uh, with uh, farmers with varying preferences and community where cassava is largely grown. Then uh, the NCRP nationally co coordinated uh, research program, the trial was used and we consider this, this trait. And uh, this was a score sheet that was used. We, we, we solely based uh, uh, the selection on plant type, stem color, plant health, root yield, uh, and the state. And we condensed that uh, scale of measurement into overall desirability. The scale of measurement range from A to D, highly, fairly, not, and undecided. And what we be able to get from this is uh, we try to partition this into female and male, and we discover that what uh, the female selected is equally what the male have selected, that the clone they have selected is equally the same. And from there, we were able to find out that um, uh, yield attributes seem to be more important, more important uh, than the stem quality. But the thing is, uh, when you break down most of this, uh, the root quality, when you break it down, you understand that a lot of trait that goes on and on with this uh, root, uh, root trait. I think I have a list which I can show. 
Then uh, we discovered that farmer, root skin color is linked to root milliness in cassava when the farmer sees that uh, the outer skin color is, is dark brown, they think it's mealy. And there are a number of traits, you know, with farmers think of, which they explain, but it's probably not, might not be captured in the ontology. And there is a way we could think we should link this. Then uh, that's on field participatory varietal selection. When you, when you think about what the producer and the processor want, the trade description seems to be different. So the list goes on and on. When you, when you have processor talking about a palatability, there are a number of trade that goes into palatability. You see people describe, you can see the description of producers and uh, processors. So it goes on and on. And this, we think, they are one way related to what we have described in the cassava trait ontology. So we, we need to think of a way of linking this back. So as ontology impacted us, it has imp improved our data quality. It has eased the collection on the field, then exchange and comparison of data is simplified. Then what are the challenges? We need to keep the ontology in sync. And I must commend Marie Angelic. She's doing a great work in this regard. Then uh, we need to assess the need for addition of terms through open communication with breeders. Then what's the next step? Integrating most of this phenol hub into cassava base. And that's what we consider as our cassava base version two. Um, then we need to work closer with the crop ontology team to, to, to come up with a more efficient workflow. Thank you for listening.